Once you have installed the Remote Desktop Commander suite and configured it to successfully collect data from your session hosts, you have a decision to make. Specifically, do you want to deploy the Remote Desktop Commander agent service onto your session hosts? Deploying the agent service on your session hosts expands the types of data Remote Desktop Commander can collect, report on, and present to you in the form of expanded dashboards and features. However, it requires significantly more space in your SQL database, so you will first need to verify that you have the space required to do so. If you have more than two session hosts you are monitoring with Remote Desktop Commander in order to collect agent data, you must have Remote Desktop Commander linked to a full version of Microsoft SQL or Microsoft Azure SQL, both of which can store greater amounts of data than SQL Express, which is limited to 10 gigabytes. What additional information do you gain by deploying our agent service? Well, you can start reviewing per user session and per process performance information to see which users and programs are most impacting performance on your terminal servers. You can also track inbound and outbound TCP and UDP connections by process and user session, which is useful for incident response, e.g. what programs are opening up what communication channels inside and outside your network. For more intensive user monitoring, you can also turn on screenshot recording and window caption recording on a per-user basis. So let's see this agent information in action. In the current performance and load across the farm dashboard, I can select a host, expand the recent user sessions on the host, and view performance details about the user session on that host. In this case, I'm reviewing the performance of a services session. I can scroll through minute-by-minute minute agent captures to see what service processes spiked CPU and memory, and when. Or, let's say a user reported a performance problem during a specific time frame. I can pull up the historical performance and load across the farm dashboard, zero in on the day and time when there was an issue, and then see all of the user sessions on the relevant servers and the resources they were consuming. I can then jump into a high resource consuming session and isolate out the process that was using elevated resources. As mentioned earlier, the Remote Desktop Commander agent can also collect TCP and UDP activity by process. When I view a user session, I can see which processes communicated with what internal and external resources over what hosts. In fact, in the User Session Review menu, I can search for user sessions that have opened communications over those specific ports. Some organizations have more intensive user activity monitoring needs depending on their industry and regulatory requirements. If you have the Remote Desktop Commander agent deployed, you can use login scripts on a per-user or per-group basis to enable window caption recording and screenshot recording for specific users. Window caption recording, which can be summarized by user in daily or weekly reports, gives you more context as to what users are doing in their sessions. Screenshot recordings then provide you with a visual history of what users are working on in their sessions. Remote Desktop Commander offers other useful dashboards that can present agent data in different ways. For instance, the CPU use by application dashboard can show you the individual programs that were using the most CPU on your hosts in a specific time frame.
Similarly, the average and peak memory use by application dashboards can show you the programs utilizing the most memory at given times of day. Let's now talk about how you can deploy the agent service to your session hosts. If you have a small number of hosts in your environment, you can simply copy the rdr agentsetup.exe file from the agent installer subdirectory to your computers and run the setup manually. It should take less than a minute to complete. If you already have a software deployment solution on your network, you can obtain the MSI files for the RDR agent setup package by extracting those MSI and cabinet files from the EXE package. Simply open a command prompt, change directories to the agent installer subdirectory, and then type RDR agent setup.exe space forward slash extract. Once this is done, the MSI files and cabinet files you need will be extracted into that folder. If you don't already have a commercial software deployment solution on your network, you can use the PSExec freeware tool available from Microsoft's SysInternals website. Here is syntax that provides an example of how you can use PSExec to push install the Remote Desktop Commander agent out to your session hosts. You can build this into a PowerShell script or batch file if you want. First, use the make directory command to create an RDC agent subfolder off of the root of C on each host. Then, copy the agent installer to that new directory through the C$ hidden administrative share. Finally, make psexec run the installer on that remote computer. Make sure you add the forward slash qn option so that the agent installer runs silently. Afterwards, remove both the agent installer package and the directory you created off the root of C with the delete and remove directory commands. Once you have deployed the Remote Desktop Commander agent to all of your session hosts, you should immediately run the Polling Rate and Agent Tuning Wizard. This wizard is accessible from the Polling tab in the Remote Desktop Commander Configuration tool. Adjusting the polling rate of the Master Remote Desktop Reporter service, as well as the polling rate of our agent services, puts you directly in control of how much data is collected, how quickly the size of your database grows, and how much CPU the agent service will use over time. While the default polling settings of every two minutes for the main remote desktop reporter service and 30 seconds for the agent service may suffice for small environments with less than 15 users per session host, larger environments with more servers or more users per host should select the light or lighter setting from the slider in this wizard. Note also that if you do not need TCP or UDP connection data by process, you can configure the agent service to emit this data, which will further speed up performance, reduce agent CPU use, and reduce database growth. Once you click the Apply Polling Changes, the wizard will automatically reconfigure each agent on each host and then restart the Master Remote Desktop Reporter service.
After you have run the polling rate and agent tuning wizard, wait about 10 minutes. Then open the Remote Desktop Commander client. If the master Remote Desktop Reporter service has been in successful communication with its agent services, you should now see the agent data present in the various dashboards discussed in this video. It can take as much as 10 minutes for this data to sync up, so please give it time. If for any reason you do not see the agent data, make sure that the main Remote Desktop Reporter Services domain account it operates under has local administrator rights on each session host, as this is vital. Likewise, make sure that the Remote Service Management Windows Firewall exception is enabled on each session host. Finally, after you've been collecting agent data for about a day, go back into the Database tab in the Remote Desktop Commander Configuration tool. Here you can see available free space, which gives you an idea about how quickly database space is being consumed. You can always adjust the retention intervals for your agent data down to reduce database growth. The default is three days, which provides a nice balance of performance history compared to database size. Lastly, you can run an agent polling diagnostics report during business hours to see how long it is taking the agent service to collect data on each of your session hosts, how long it takes to transmit the data over the network, and how many objects get transferred per poll on average. If agent collection and transfer time is taking longer than 20 seconds in total, consider rerunning the polling rate and agent tuning wizard to choose a less frequent polling interval.